So right, right now what we're going to do is uh, we're going to read this column that I wrote 26 years ago uh, entitled Fear of Falling. And I remember who stimulated me to write this. I, I remember, I remember this person. I'm not going to say too much more, but I do remember. So let's, I wrote this 26 years ago. The 40-year-old, the 41, 40, 42-year-old love doctor wrote this. And so now it'd be interesting if re, I'm reading it with you. I haven't read, I didn't read it before the show. I just printed it out from my archive. Let's see if I still agree with myself. <laughs> Let's see if I still agree with the love doctor. All right, of old. And so here it is, it's called Fear of Fall. Now y'all remember the love doctor who wrote this was kind of full of himself. He was young, coming into his own, and he was kind of, well, you know, he was kind of felt good about what he was doing and what he had been able to figure out. So here you go. Since most of us only experience it once or twice, the chemistry that occurs when one human being is deeply attracted by another is one of the least understood factors controlling human behavior. It causes bold, successful men to behave like little boys. It makes mature, assured women fumble all over themselves in confusion. When the powerful primal urge to form a couple strikes, even the most educated, self-confident cosmopolitan among you suddenly become insecure, bubbling, indecisive fools. This week's column is inspired by a dear friend. The woman is confident, positive, assertive, worldwide, and very stable as a human being. You know the kind of person you expect to have every aspect of their life under complete control. Now she has become a tightly wound ball of emotional confusion and frustration. This weekend, however, unlike most of my readers, friend had the privilege of picking up her telephone to have a private conversation with the love doctor. Friend finds herself in a situation that is completely alien. This woman who has prepared herself to succeed in a male-dominated society, she who has donned the armor of self-control and self-analysis, now finds herself thrown back to the level of emotional security we all felt as children when we sought the acceptance of each new child or group of children we met. Try to remember what it was like to stand in that playground hoping that you would be accepted by the strange group of children you who were already playing there. Remember the fear, the wondering if you were saying the right things, if you had on the right kind of clothes, hoping not to suffer the pain of rejection, your feelings at the mercy of others. Made you wish you could read minds, didn't it? That same sense of vulnerable helplessness occurs when people find themselves falling in love. As adults, we try to avoid being at the mercy of other people's acceptance. We avoid going to new places alone or having to depend on many new friends. We prefer to go with a date or a friend or a group of friends so that we already have somebody to play with when we get there. Hey, Adrian, how you doing? We avoid putting ourselves in the position of having to have strangers accept us and liked us. Falling in love also puts you in the position of needing that other person to accept and approve of you. It's a scary situation. No matter how powerful you are, how confident, how successful, or how beautiful, depending on another to choose you puts you right back in those childhood fears, except now it seems worse. So here friend is, making all sorts of decisions, influencing all sorts of people, exerting her will over how she lives and how she earns her living. And for once, her well-trained mind is helpless to control the direction of her future, her happiness. Now she finds that her happiness is at the mercy of another, the one who must choose her as she has chosen him. It's rough, it's miserable. The suffering may be longer or shorter depending on the situation, but there's hardly a way around it. You want to be the person, but do they want you? You want the person, but do they want you? 
If you've never had this kind of anxiety, then you've probably never fallen in love. Now, some of you readers who find yourself in a similar situation are thinking, okay, love doctor, you told us about the problem, now what about the solution? Unfortunately, readers, there is no solution to experiencing the anxiety of involvement. The minute you realize that you want someone in your life, you will fear that they don't want you. So don't worry, you're normal. Sometimes that is the biggest part of the problem, thinking that either, you're a, either you or your situation is crazy. People just don't tell each other about these helpless feelings. We like to seem tough, especially us men. Perhaps those who suffer most are those who find themselves on the waiting side of love. They know how they feel, but for some reason or other, the object of their love is confused and are indecisive about his or her feelings. This can be miserable. This is the situation in which friend finds herself in an emotional purgatory of insecurity and helplessness. My advice to friend or any of you with the same illness. One, realize that there are no guarantees when it comes to love. To be in love is to be vulnerable to heartbreak. Two, express yourself. Let the person know how you feel. They might feel just like you, and both of you are suffering needlessly. Number three, dream your dreams. Enjoy the fantasies of your possibilities. Actually, doing so increases your possibilities for making your dream come true. By giving your subconscious a vision of what you want, your body language may actually change to communicate your feelings better. And number four, pray. You may not be able to call on the love doctor, but you can certainly call on him. Hey, I think, I think the 40-year-old love doctor did all right. What y'all think? Y'all think he did all right? Hey, Mel, how you doing? I think the 40-year-old love doctor kind of hit it on the head, and I sure remember who that was about. And if they hear it, they're going to remember who it was about, too. And uh, so right now, we're going to take a little break. Love that's on the square. That's what it's all about. That's what everybody wants. Everybody wants a love that's on the square, a love that's going to be there for a while, a love that they can count on. And, and, and uh, I'm all about that. I'm about, I'm about that, about, about, about that. That's what the love doctor is about. And uh, we're just happy that you've tuned in and uh, that you keep coming back because we're trying to have a little fun on the air and uh, share our life and, and uh, share uh, the things that we've learned along the way. So hopefully other folk will say, you know what? Life can be good. Let's, let's, just, let's just work at it and do what we have to do to accommodate one another. Because I'm going to tell you something, y'all. That's, that's the, probably the biggest thing in terms of having a long-term, ongoing, good relationship. It's about accommodating somebody else you know uh i i gave up trying to change my woman so long ago and it just takes all the stress out she she is who she is you know uh you know if i made a list of a hundred things i wanted in a woman or if i made a list of 10 things that i wanted in a woman i probably got 8.5 you know and so that's the deal that's the deal uh <laughs> let's see if I own the Eugene Ben said Dinah Washington. Let's hear if I own a magic wine. Uh, we, 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 we may do, but she's not in New Orleans, man. I'm trying to do New Orleans music. You're gonna be messing with me. <laughs> so anyway, uh, we've learned. We've learned. That's one of the things that we've learned. And so, uh, once again, you're listening to Lloyd Dennis and the Love Doctor Show on WBOK 12:30 a.m. Online, WBOK1230AM.com, and on Facebook Live at Love Dr. Nola. And uh, thanks for being here. So uh, let me tell you this. So we have an election coming up, and you're going to hear me say something about voting almost every show. Because if you say you love your people, 
If you say you care about your family, you care about the children in your community, and you're not voting, you're lying. You're just lying. You're fooling yourself. You're tripping. Because when we don't vote, it, it's like the people that's in power know that they don't have to deal with us. They don't have to deal. Oh, we'll get loud now. Oh, oh we'll be loud and wanting to fuss and all of that. But don't, that don't change anything. So what I'm suggesting is, is if you really bout it, bout it. Register to vote. We, these are judgeships coming up, man. Lots of, lots of us are going to find ourselves, uh, our, our children, our relatives are going to find themselves in front of a judge. And boy, you, wouldn't you be sick if you, if you find yourself in front of a judge and you didn't play no part in deciding who that was? Another thing is, is if you don't register to vote, they won't let you serve on a jury. And if some of us don't serve on juries, how are we going to keep some of these kids from going to jail for nothing, hardly nothing? That's how, they, that's how they get to railroad us, because we're we not voting. So with the wrong people getting elected, or at least whoever get elected, understand that they, they don't play, have to play to us. They got to play to other people. So anyway, anyway, anyway. So this got to say that. Like, you know, if, if we about love and we about community, if we about anything, when we have the opportunity to vote, we're going to do that. So uh, right now, um, so that column, you know, that's, that's, that's some real stuff. You know, people, people, I've seen, I've seen bunches of people fall apart when they start falling in love. They're like, oh, oh. you know, because you're wondering. You're wondering. Uh, I remember, I remember, you know, I remember, shoot, I remember just walking up to my boo on the bus way back there and asking her if I could sit next to her. She could have said no. And I would have been crushed. You know, so there's so you gotta take a chance when 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 love is involved. You gotta take a chance. And and you're better off finding out early than 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 get being stuck in this emotional hell for a long, long time and only to find out later. When you could have moved on. You know, where you you could be getting over your little disappointment by now. So, so what I'm suggesting to you is, listen, there's no way around it. You know, if you're a human being and you, and you start feeling a certain way about somebody, it's going to be like that. It's going to be like that. So there's nothing wrong with you. You're not the only one that's experienced this fear of falling. You know, you're not the only one who's experienced this, this insecurity when, when, when you, when you, you know, you're wondering if you love somebody, you're wondering if they loving you, if they love you back. And they may be in the same situation. I, there's probably really funny situations where both people are like trying to play it cool because they don't want to get the, they don't want, they don't want to play the first card and, and, and get their little feelings hurt. So that's, that's another thing. That's, an, y'all got to get over that. Y'all just have to get, we, we got to just get, get over this thing about where we, we just, we, we, we be so skirt. We be so skirt. We skirt that, that, that the other person's not going to feel the same. And then we act like we better off if we don't know. You're not better off if you don't know. You, you are better off if you know. And what you really need to do is uh, own up to it, ask the question, uh, and find out or move on. You know, uh, do you. And don't change yourself. Go on, man. Oh. Don't change yourself in, for, in that situation. Don't, don't try and act like what you think that person wants, because that leads to absolute calamity. Because you can't maintain that that long. I think about the most you can maintain that is between nine months and a year. And then real you going to come out, the real them going to come out, and now you got a mess because you're not happy being... You're not happy trying to fit into what you thought they wanted. And to tell you the truth, that might not be what they, they may not have the kind of respect that they would have had if you would have just done you. Y'all, you understand what y'all feel me? Do you. Do you share your feelings? You know, I used to have the attitude. My, my attitude was like, you know, if you, 
You look like me. I have something wrong with you. <laughs> not, not so, y'all. Not so, but that's the way I acted sometimes. <laughs> oh man, this is. Uh, I'm enjoying doing this Love Doctor show. Thank you so much for tuning in and 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 being a part of the audience. Uh, one of the other things I'm really enjoying is is this radio station. Uh, WBOK is 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 a very special place. Uh, it's family, you know. It's 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 everybody around here is trying to do the the best that they can to make it the station the best that it can be, and it's becoming something uh, very special in our community, and uh, and I'm sure uh, the management would would express that to you too. Uh, so you know, it's uh, it's good. Spring is here, ladies and gentlemen. Spring is here. And I don't know about you, but I still get a little spring fever. I still feel like, okay, it's time to get outside, out, you know. So we're going to talk about that in, in just a little while. Uh, so that whole, that whole piece that we did today, I hope you, you understand. And those of you who, I think a lot of us, uh, lot, I hope a lot of you just laughed because you remember going through it. But I'm sure there are still people in the audience who are about to go through it. And I hope what it does is just kind of prepare you for just the way it is. You know, human beings try and act like we're the sophisticated, uh, perfectly intellectual thinking human beings. Like we are just so smart and we have everything figured out. Well, the truth is we, 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 they, we're, we're beasts. We, we're, we're God's creatures. We are creatures. And, and particularly things about romance and love and, and passion and the mating game are like just basically creature stuff. You know, it's, 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 it's creature stuff. It's like you get attracted to somebody and most of the time when we're attracted to somebody, it's because they have certain biological characteristics which mark them as probably a good mate in terms of the kind of offspring that they... See, we don't think about that. We don't think about that, but that's what's happening to the creature. That's why you're attracted to certain people. You're attracted to them because the way they look, the way they move, they fit with your concept or they fit with your uh, vision, not, not the one you're talking about. You fit with your vision of, of what you think would, would create a, 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 good, a good mating partner. You know, they, they tend to have uh, symmetrical features. They tend to look healthy. That's why, that's why women put rouge on their cheeks. Did you, did you know that, Lee? That's why women put rouge on their cheeks. It makes them look healthy. Like, like you got, you know, flushed cheeks, like good blood circulation. Same thing with lips. So, so, so the mating game is not an intellectual game. I guess that's what I'm trying to say. It's not an intellectual game. Now, we need to do some critical thinking, uh, and we probably should do that critical. That's another column. We should do that critical thinking before we uh, spend too much time with a person, but anyway, I uh, just wanted to let you know that that if you feel like a bumbling fool when you're falling in love, you're not the only one. You're not the only. Don't trip. You you aren't that special. That's just the way it is. It's part of the part of the mating game. The love doctor understands the mating game. Yes, and it's not about so much your brain. <laughs> it's about the rest of you. It's about the rest of you. Your brain. So, so what happens is, 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 and I try to get people to understand this is, so your brain is the computer that figures out two things. How to get what your soul wants and how to avoid what your soul fears. It doesn't, your brain really doesn't decide what you want and what you fear. But your brain is the computer that calculates 
how to either get it for you or how to avoid it. And, and that part of your brain is called the hypothalamus. And it is so far in the center of your brain. But it's interesting because they always talk about your eyes or the window to your soul. It was really interesting is so when we look at people, a lot of times that's the first attraction. They look attractive to us. You know, then if they sound like they make sense, like they're not crazy, they more they become more attractive. I mean, if somebody looks attractive but they sound like they're crazy, that that trips that that trips the brain. You say, oh nope, nope, not suitable, not not suitable, mate, not suitable, mate. You know, but 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 it's it's usually starts visually. It usually starts visually, and and but the but the it's funny about the eyes. So the eyes are on the front of your face, right? And the front of your face, right behind your eyes, is a part of the brain that's called the neocortex. And that's where most of your high-level thinking comes from, your neocortex. That's, that's the analytical and thinking and critical thinking part of your brain. But guess what? The nerve that comes out of your eye doesn't touch it. It's got, an insul it's got insulation around it. It goes all the way through the brain. And, it, and the only part of the brain that, that, the, that your eyes are attached to is that little central hypothalamus, the seat of fear and desire. So you become attracted to somebody because they look good. Your, 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 your creature makes a judgment that they're healthy. Uh, they would probably make very good offspring. So uh, if, if they're not crazy or, or lame, than then, then, uh, or self-destructive, or mean, then, then there might be a suitable mate. So, you, you know, your creature's doing that, but it's not telling you that. It doesn't talk to you like that. It just gives you that woozy feeling. <laughs> so anyway, ladies and gentlemen, uh, that's, that's uh, what the piece is about today. And, you know, just get used to it. That's the way we, us human beings are. They, there is no guarantee uh, magic, uh, automatically safe way to fall in love with somebody. It always involves a risk, uh, but sometimes we make it worse by, by not being willing to, to express ourselves and sometimes by not being ourselves. By not being ourselves. The last thing is to get in a relationship with somebody that thinks you you somebody else. That's not go that's not gonna work for anybody. Not one person. So anyway, enjoy the process. Just kind of I mean, you know, you know, I, I, I'll tell I'll tell people all the time. I, I would run a background check. <laughs> In today's world, I, yes, I would. I would run a background check, at least a credit check, right? Uh, especially if you're at a certain point in life where, where people, <laughs> I'd run that credit check. Yeah, you know, because, and I tell you what, see, and if that credit back, if, if that credit check comes back real ugly and you look at it, <laughs> your creature gonna say, uh uh. Because <laughs> there's part of you that's afraid of that. And, then, and your eyes would say, oh, uh uh. -uh. No, no, that, that, that might change your whole perception of this person that you were getting woozy all over about. You look at that credit check, then you know who they are. Oh, then you know who they are. Uh, so anyway, uh, we normally would take a little break right about here, if that's possible. And uh, then I'd like to come to you and talk to you about out and about. But I guess we can we can go right into that. We can go right into our out and about segment right now. Woo! It's like I say, the springtime. Boo and I have been accused of of, of of balling out of control by our children. And and but there's absolutely no reason for us to stay home. I mean, take care of my mother, but my mother after a certain time in the evening is in her bed and she's fine. She's Nothing wrong with her mind. She's not about to do anything crazy, and she can take care of her basic needs on her own. So, you know, we like, all right, let's go, let's go do this. And and I actually have an app on my phone where I can check in on mom every now and then. And, that is, and it's a really nice comfort. 
that I can literally pull my phone out and press this app and see what mom's doing. So you're gonna let, we're going to take a little break, and then we're going to come back with uh, Out and About and tell you what we've been up to and what we might get off into. Welcome back to the Love Doctor Show. You're listening to Lloyd Dennis. Uh, they call me the Love Doctor. We were on 1230 AM on your radio dial, online, 1230am.com. And on Facebook Live, just find Lloyd Dennis, and you can hang out with us because I moved it back to my regular page. And uh, I, w- I want to, before we get out of here, I just want to do our out and about, let you know what we've been up to. Friday was the first Friday, so you know I did the real love show out at Pontchartrain Landing. They sold out again. They sold out. If you're interested in getting involved with, with that show, just go to Facebook and look for Real Love, and, you, and you'll get the information you need. But they're selling out, so if you're interested in going, get your tickets. Uh, and Friday, uh, and Saturday, Saturday, uh, I participated in the Orleans, Orleans Public Education Network's Public Education Awards, and I had the uh, honor of, I'm, a, I'm a board member of that, and I had the honor of um, doing a presentation for Charles Rice Jr., who is our illustrious uh, president of Entergy New Orleans. And so he, he thought I was going to give him an award, and I kind of tripped him up because uh, his dad, uh, Charles Rice Sr., is a silverback. Silverback volunteer shows up every week at Berman uh, Elementary in the West Bank. And I talked to Charles. I said, Charles, why don't you, why don't you present your son an award? And he did, and it was a very, it was a special moment. Uh, I thought we was, I thought we was gonna get a little tear out of Charles' eyes, but you know he, he a CEO, he can't have no tears. But he did reach up to, him. you know, how people reach up and touch their, 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 their nose at the top of it. He did that a couple of times. I thought we were gonna get him. Saturday, we believe that's what we did. Saturday, and went home. We went home. And, and that's hard to believe, but we went home. That's because we were out late the night before. And then Sunday, Sunday we were out at uh, Soul Fest out at Autumn Park. My wife loves that. It's a family kind of festival. Uh, and uh, we got out there early to hear Rochelle Cook. If you ever have an opportunity to hear this woman sing, you want to do it. She's fantastic. And, uh, and they had some other people out there. I really didn't know that much about them. But uh, uh, what's the new, Benet? Benet was 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 the last uh, act, and uh, it was it was it was nice. Like I say, family, mostly families out there. We, you know, you sit in your chair and you listen to the music, and the, and the weather was absolutely perfect. And that's our first festival. That's Boo, Boo and me, Boo and I. Eh? That's our first festival. So that we knew it. We know it's festival season now. We're gonna do something a little different that uh, this Friday coming. We're going to the opera. That's right. Uh, Mahalia Jackson Theater is, uh, has, it has a show called Champion, and it's Terrence Blanchard's jazz opera. I've never been to the opera, but if I'm going to go to the opera, I may as well go to Terrence Blanchard's, right? And I'm really looking forward to that experience. Terrence Blanchard has, uh, he, he has done some, some really nice things for the kids in the Silverback Society. And when I saw the show go up, I said, got to support Terrence. So we're going to be out there on the front row in the balcony. You know, I can't afford the real, real expensive tickets, but front row of the balcony is pretty good. Actually, I prefer that because you don't, your, your neck's not bent back looking up. You kind of look more looking down. And then Saturday, I have the honor. Uh, I was really honored. The, the Sigma Gamma Rho sorority uh, asked me to address the young people in the Upward Bound program out at UNO. And that's a big honor for me because uh, when you get a chance to, to share with young people, you get a chance to shape the future. You get a chance to shape the future. So you feel like you're part of the architecture. You're part of the construction plan for what the new world is going to be like. And so that, I re- pre- really appreciate that. And uh, Jay, has you ever heard of Les Jetrix? He's a blues player, guitar singer. Right? He's been on a cruise ship. He lives here. He, but he's been on a cruise ship for four years. They wouldn't let him get off. He's bad. And so, but he got tired of it. It, it gets old after a while. And so he's back in town and he's playing uh, um, every Friday at Bamboola's and Boo and I. Can't go this Friday. Got something else we got to do. 
uh, because we were in the Mahalia Jackson Theater for Terrence Blanchard's jazz opera. You ever been at opera jazz? Jazz, you ever been at opera? Jazz said, uh, long, long time ago? Yeah, so you know, we're gonna check it out. I know, I've never been, but it's a, jazz op it's a jazz opera, so it ought to be cool, right? It ought to be cool. And yeah, Boo's bike arrived. Boo's bike arrived. The 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 naranja. That's what we're calling it because it's orange. <laughs> the naranja has arrived. But I gotta wait for some parts because the box is busted up. And so uh, we'll get those parts in and get it get it back on the road. It turned cold anyway, so we weren't gonna ride. So remember, love is an action word, and the minimum action is that you think about what you do, how what you do impacts those that you claim you love. Because if you don't, if you're not going through that thought process before you act, you don't love nobody. You might want them in your life. You might have an attachment, but you don't love them. So the minimum love, the minimum action that love requires is that you think about how what you do impact those that you claim to love. And if that's not happening, somebody's just dead wait along for the ride. Next week's uh, Love Doctor column is History Making Love. History Making Love. I don't even remember what that one was about. We'll read it together, together, again. And we'll see if I still agree with the 40-year-old Love Doctor. He's been, he's been on it, though. I tell you what, he's been on it. So I hope you show up for class next week. And if you learned something from the Love Doctor this evening, try it out at home. And if you see me in the street, or out at the club, or at the festival, holler at your boy here. Yeah? Holler at me. And right now we're going to go out with, uh, I don't know how to say goodbye by Philip Manuel from his CD entitled, They Don't Know. And you've been produced and controlled by the one and only jazz. Thank you, sir. Y'all come back next week. Now, Dr. Gray's about to get in here. So I got to get out as well. I got to get all my apparatus and stuff. So it's a good thing to end up on the song. Bro. Yeah, that's the song. That's it. I'm going to get out the way. What'd you say? I'm going to get out the way. So Facebook, it's been lovely. But uh, I got to make room for Dr. Greg, so that means I got to take all my paraphernalia. Look, y'all, y'all, look, this is, look all this stuff I got here to do this show. See all this stuff? Yeah. My little mixer. Oh, you can't see it. Oh, I'm turning y'all upside down. Yes, indeed. Ooh. There you go. See all of that stuff? Just to make this happen. Y'all be good.